User and Group Management. After completing this video, you'll be able to understand folder level permissions, invite project members, manage member permissions, and create member groups. Whether you're a small team of just a few internal CAD users or you're working in a larger organization and need to control access for external vendors, understanding permissions and manage infusion is going to be critical to make sure you understand who has access to your data and at what level. So in this video, we're going to dive in and talk about project and folder level permissions, how to add and create members and groups, and what kind of access control is available. So we'll look at a standard part here where we've got a couple of components, some internal, some external, and this is going to be a project inside of our hub that has subfolders. Now, if you are a legacy Fusion user, any previously created projects may have been an open, closed, or private project type. The newer project types are all going to be folder level permissions, which means you have more granular control over who has access to your data and how. In order to do this, we need to have access to the web client. We can't do it directly in Fusion, but there are a few ways that we can access this directly from our data panel. First is to go up to our hub, select the three dots on the right, and select Open in Web. We can also do this from the People tab, assuming you have adequate permissions, you can select View Members or Add Members. And finally, we can go into our Data Panel's Data section, and we can select the Open in Web. Let's go ahead and take a look at this data, both from our admin section, as well as somebody that just has viewer level permissions. First, we have somebody that has only viewer level permissions. They'll be able to see the project that they have access to and all of the subfolders. However, any subfolders that don't have adequate permissions will show the icon with a dashed line in the bottom right corner, indicating that it's going to be empty for them. Even though there is data in each of these subfolders, it will tell them that there are no files to view. Any folder that they do have permissions to view, they will see a small lock icon, noting that they have limited access. They may see data such as members and permissions, but when clicked on, it won't show any information for them. They will have access to data such as wiki pages, as well as the ability to add comments to projects but they will not have access to download the data or make copies. For example, if we select one of these designs, this level one bracket, we can see a preview on the screen. We can also see any design references. We'll have information about the components, the bill of materials, any additional properties, as well as the ability to view this in 3D on the web. If this design contained other components or had simulation data or CAM toolpaths, you would see that information here as well. We can use any of the markup and measurement tools in here. And again, we can add comments, but we don't have the ability to open Infusion or to download or create a share link. Now let's take a look at the same data from somebody that has admin access. Somebody that is a team admin, meaning they have access to administrative privileges at the top level of the entire hub. They'll be able to see all projects here on the left-hand side, as well as the subfolders in each project. In addition to being able to see all the data, the administrator will also have the option to manage members and their permissions. This can be done at the top level of the hub for a specific project or at the subfolder level. In this case, if we go to members and permissions while we're at the top level of this project, we would be granting permissions and access to every subfolder inside of this project. If instead we pick a subfolder, for example, designs for approval, inside of the subfolder, we have four members. And inside of here, those four members can have varying level of permissions. We can see here that we've got an admin group, we've got a vendor group, We've got a single user that has viewer level permission and a single user that has administrative level permission. By clicking on these members, we'll be able to change their permission level. In this case, a viewer can view the files, add comments, and see the people who have created comments. A reader will be able to do everything a viewer can do, but can also open the design on the desktop and download a copy. An editor has the ability to upload, rename, move, and even delete data from the folder. The manager can do everything an editor can do, but they also have the ability to manage members and set their permission levels. 
And an administrator will have everything a manager can do, but also the ability to delete data forever. There is a no role, no permissions option that oftentimes is the default whenever a new user is added. So that way they don't automatically have specific privileges. If you wanna add a new user, you can type in their email ID. You can also click here and anybody that is a member or a group that's already been created can be selected from this list. If you need to create a new group, you can also do this by selecting Create Group. You can enter a new group name, determine the permissions level for that entire group, and add new members to the group as well. Once again, it's important to remember that this is at the folder level. So these users only have access to Design for Approval. If I go to the Design for Quote folder, notice that under Members and Permissions, there's only the admin group or the users that have admin permissions that have access to this data. I would need to add a new user and give them the ability to access this data at a specific permissions level. Once again, by default, it'll have no permissions. We'll simply need to go in and allow them to be a viewer, a reader, or whatever permission makes sense for that specific user. Now that we have a little bit more understanding on the basics of the project, as well as the folder level permissions. We also need to dive a little bit deeper and go into the admin section of our web client. This can be found in the upper right-hand corner under your initials or your avatar. Remember that you do need to be an admin to be able to access this data. Now that we're in this admin section of our web client, we have team settings, members and roles, projects, and even item numbering. In the team settings area, we can determine whether or not file sharing is allowed. We can also determine how users get initial access. For example, it's common to have a domain that's the same for all of your CAD users. You can determine whether these domains are auto approve and whether or not you wanna set your teams as available to join, depending on the user's domain name in their email. You can even bypass the option that requires admin approval. But when you're working in larger organizations or you have a lot of users that need access to data, it may be important to always put in place admin approvals or admin invites to any user that needs access to data. We also have options for turning on design reservations. When working in larger groups, it can be common for multiple users to open the same design at the same time. With design reservation in the collaboration section, this ensures that only the first member that opened and began editing the design will be able to save a version of that design. This prevents any design conflicts from happening. Next in the members and roles section, we'll be able to see members that are inside of this organization. Currently it's showing active, but we can also create or deactivate members at any point in time and reactivate them at a later date. This is common if you have external vendors or contractors that need temporary access to data. You don't need to remove them from the system, but you can activate them or deactivate them as required. In this section, if you were the original creator of a hub, you will automatically be the owner and team administrator, and that cannot be changed. However, anybody that's been invited can be a team administrator, they can be a team member, or a project contributor. And each of these will have different levels of permissions and access granted. For example, project contributors are for folder level projects. They'll have access to a specific project. They'll be able to even invite new users to a project, but based on team settings, those will still need admin approval. They cannot view access or join any other project inside of the hub. They won't be able to create new projects or even view projects they're not a part of. Even if their role is promoted to the role of administrator, they won't be able to create groups or transfer projects. Now, somebody that's a team member for folder level projects, they will be able to do everything a project contributor can do, but team members can also request to join other projects they're not a member of. They can create new projects in a hub. They can invite users to those projects. They'll be able to work in projects based on their specific project role. So, Again, a team member doesn't necessarily make somebody an administrator, but they can have specific roles such as a member or a manager of a project that gives them additional access. 
And finally, a team administrator will have the top level of access, allowing them to invite and approve new members and even give access to those members to different various projects and subfolders. Under the project section, we'll be able to see active and archive projects. And we'll also be able to manage roles. When we go to manage roles in a project, this is going to be the top level permission. We've already looked at this, but just as a quick refresher, this is going to override any subfolder level access. For example, if I pick a user and I want to add this user at this top level, if I give this user additional levels of permission that exceed what's at the folder level, this level of permission will apply to all the subfolders. So if I make this person an editor, they'll be an editor in this project at the top level, but they'll also become an editor at any folder that they have access to. So once again, keep in mind that the top level at the project is going to supersede or override any lower level permissions at the folder level. So this is important when you're giving access to external vendors or people in purchasing or somebody that doesn't need edit or delete access to the data. Make sure that you are familiar with the ways in which you can add new members to your groups, how you can control their permission level, and who you give access to as a team manager or a team admin, giving them the control to bring new people into the organization. While this may seem like quite a lot, the ability to create groups and add users to groups can be a quick way to streamline the process if you are working in larger teams and you are working on a lot of different projects. Just remember to pay close attention to who you provide access to and what their permission levels are for each of your projects and subfolders.